Today I'll be showing you how to install a 2.5 inch solid state drive into a Lenovo ThinkPad T470 laptop. Um, a nice little laptop with some pretty cool options as we'll see once we get the back panel off. So we'll need a Phillips head screwdriver and first we'll need to remove the battery. And we can start with removing the screws, and they should be uh, there should be a little lock washer on each one, so the screw shouldn't come out. However, once in a while, uh, that does happen. So there's screws here, here, and here, here, and here, uh, and that is one right there too. So I believe that's all. But we'll of course take a look if I uh, and I'll, I'll mention something. But otherwise, let's start the time lapse. All right, so now it's helpful to have something like a plastic guitar pick so you can score along uh, the palm rest and the back panel cover without scratching the material. So let's go along with the guitar pick all the way around and just be cautious around the I.O. ports like the HDMI and USB ports, etc. Okay, now that we have the back panel removed, we see the 2.5 inch hard drive and solid state drive bay right here, which is where we'll be putting this SanDisk uh, X400 256 gigabyte solid state drive. And over here we have a WWAN slot, which also supports a M.2 200 and uh, 2242 M.2 SSD. That can be installed right here. Um, there's various brands available. I don't have any at the moment, otherwise I would install one. And I may order some in the future, but I'm not too, uh, for now I'm just sticking to the 2.5 inch drive option. And the Wi-Fi card is right here. Right here we have the uh, two DIMM slots for RAM. So this, Motherboard supports DDR4 RAM, so right now we have 8 gigabytes installed right there of 2400 megahertz RAM, I believe, and one empty slot. And I actually have an assortment of DDR4 RAM over there. I think I'll install an extra four, uh, four gigabytes to bring it up to 12 gigabytes and see what the performance is like. And well, I'll also spend some time cleaning off some of this dust, uh, probably repasting the CPU just because it's easily accessible right there. Um, but first, we also have an internal battery on this model, which is nice. Uh, it extends the battery life as well as um, having the external one installed. And before I do any service or installs, I would like to well, it's proper practice to unplug the battery, so I'll do just that. You just have to pull the pull it out like that from the motherboard. And um, there is an option in BIOS to disable that battery before service, but um, I don't think it's totally necessary if you already plan on unplugging it, doing service, and then plugging it back in. Uh, not to my knowledge, at least. I don't see the difference, but I could be wrong. So I think I'll start with uh, cleaning this thing up and repacing the CPU. I'll have uh, different parts of this video bookmarked so or labeled, so you can uh, skip ahead to the SSD install if you want.
All right, so we'll install this SK Hynix 8 gigabyte, 2400 megahertz DDR4 RAM stick that we originally had in here. And I have a, another SK Hynix 4 gigabyte stick to match. So we'll have 12 gigabytes of DDR4 memory, which is not bad at all. I definitely think it's worth it for this laptop uh, to upgrade a little bit. And it's really nice to have the option of the M.2 SSD, which I would love to install. If I had one, I definitely would. So it looks like the SATA connection is just cable to the motherboard like this. And there's a caddy in here. Uh, it doesn't appear to have a, be screwed in. So you just pull it out and we'll install the SSD. Ow. I guess it's just a snug fit. Um, I think that's totally fine, especially with the back panel on top or installed. I don't think it'll really move around. So. I'll plug this battery back in. Okay, we'll get the back cover back on. All right. So now we're ready to install Windows. And I have my Windows 10 USB stick right here. Uh, the Windows 10 key should be integrated onto the motherboard, but we'll find out in one moment. Plug this thing in and boot up, and we'll give a brief Windows 10 test, and you can check out the other video I no doubt will have uploaded that is a uh, complete test run of this system as well as an overview of the specifications. All right, good news. We have entered the BIOS settings and you can see that the 12 gigabytes RAM of RAM is recognized. And right over here in the boot order, there's our solid state drive and the USB drive with Windows 10. And I'm just gonna move these up So they're in the appropriate uh, boot order. And we'll hit F10 and save and resume with the Windows 10 install. So I'll be right back to demonstrate that. Okay, so you can see after you boot on the laptop, you hit the enter key to enter a menu option. You hit F12 to get to the boot menu. And we can see that there's our solid state drive and our USB drive. Of course, we want to select the USB drive. And then we'll get into the Windows 10 install. And I'll just briefly show how I clear off an SSD if there's, if it's used or even if it's fresh um, using command prompt. And then we'll get onto the Windows 10 experience. Okay, so now that we're onto this portion of the install, we want to select custom. And to get rid of all these drive partitions, um, I just find it easier to hit shift and press F10. And that will pull up command prompt. And once here, so we're just trying to get a good shot of the screen here. There we go. Okay. Um, you type in D-I-S-K-P-A-R-T, all one word, for disk partition. And once in, we type list disk, two words. And then we can see here, 
Disc 0 is our solid state drive, disc 1 the USB, or disc 2 the USB in this case. Um, so we want to type select disc 0, enter, and clean, which will wipe and format the solid state drive. Once done, you can type exit, and then exit again to exit command prompt and hit refresh in the menu. Okay, now we're ready to select next and resume with the install. All right, so I've got Windows 10 activated and installed. All the drivers are up to date and this thing is operating pretty well with those 12 gigabytes of RAM and the i5 is the dual core uh, 6-gen i5-6300U CPU. Um, however, I still believe that it has some pretty good performance and I think it will do well for somebody. Um, so anyway, hopefully this video helped you out. And if you have upgraded your T470, let me know in the comments and we can talk about it there. All right. Have a nice day.